tapi ustaz lah yang banyak cakap eh? tak kangen lagi <laughs> Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome to Miasa Talk. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will be discussing on men the, me the mental health impact experiencing the genocide and continuous trauma. Um, talking about our brothers and sisters in Palestine and joining me today is Ustaz Muhammad Nuru. Ustaz, welcome. Thank you so Thank much you. Ustaz for joining us. Now Ustaz, um, although this is obviously a very uh, important discussion to have, a yeah. serious discussion, uh, but more than that, what we would like to offer um, our followers and those uh, who are currently following um, this genocide very closely is to be supporting them and having the conversation. Yep. Either at home, openly, um, we would really, you know, encourage um, our people, uh, you know, the society to really uh, be talking about this and we want to be able to spur action. And I know that um, we've gotten a lot of feedbacks from us that saying that they don't really know a lot of people don't know what to do at this current point you know yeah. other than providing du'as providing donation but still at the same time feeling very helpless at this point Ustaz so maybe to open this discussion Ustaz maybe a little bit on what is currently happening um, in this issue with the Israeli occupation at the current moment Ustaz Bismillahirrahmanirrahim thank you so much uh, Ms. Anita yes, and everyone uh, watching we hear many times people say that this matter is complex. Okay. This is a complex issue, or it is actually a conflict between Israel and Palestine. Is it a complex issue? Is it a conflict between Israel and Palestine? No to both. It is not a complex issue because we know that this is an occupation. Yeah? In other words, we can say that this is an ethnic cleansing going on. Yes. Ethnic cleansing. Okay. Now, some may say that uh, you know the British mandate have uh, actually provided a state for Israel. Mm. Now, one thing that everyone should know is that the Arab regimes or the Arab states, all of them rejected. That means there's no acceptance. If there is an acceptance by both parties, okay, we build two states or a single state, then after that, maybe there's skirmishes, then we can say, or oh, there's a terrorist attack after that. Yep. But there's no acceptance yet from the Arab states, from the Arab people, and people need to know that before 1948, mm. before the independence of so-called the State of Israel, actually the Arab states have actually proposed one state solution. Yep. One state, including the Jewish people. That means equal rights for everyone. Yep. Equal rights for Arabs, Muslims, Christians, Jews, whoever you are, you live in that uh, region, mm -hmm. Maka, you are given full right as a citizen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is going on now is Israel breaching uh, their, uh, apa, their, 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 their territories. Yeah? They don't have the territory for Israel. There's no territory for them in the first place, but they are actually breaching. This is double breaching. Mm. Uh, this is double, double breaching. So that's basically it. Yeah. Says, why do you think um, there is a confusion amongst still many people out there on why is this not a genocide? What is this? Masih tak faham, uh, Ustaz, dan tak nampak reality sebenarnya. We're looking at, let me, let me give all of you some numbers right here. So yeah. since September, um, October 7th, sorry, um, alone, Israel has dropped 18,000 tons of bombs in Gaza. We're looking at um, the destruction of 32,500 buildings, Ustaz. Murdered 9,000 plus Palestinians and counting, and which 3,760 of those are children and 2,600 people are still reported missing. And this is not in including says, mm. people that are currently being tortured, people in prison, people that are impacted psychologically. Says, yep. Through all this, you know, this is really stripping people from their own human rights, cutting people off from food, says, from water, from hygiene products, yep. from their own homes, of course, electricity, bombing hospitals, schools, and people are still confused and not understanding that this is a ge genocide, ethnic cleansing, really removing people through murdering people, who says. Yeah. I mean, uh, principally, this is not that different from what the Nazis did. It's just numbers. The difference is just numbers. But mm -hmm. principally, it is the same. Mm -hmm. Now, we are not uh, against uh, the existence of the Jewish people. Of course. But the problem is the Jewish state. The Jewish state, we have to come back, go back to history and understand the establishment of this very haram state. They do not have the right as a state. 
but they have the right to exist as Jewish people in Palestine. Right. And they have been existing with the Palestinians, with okay. other, uh, other population in the state of Palestine peacefully. Okay. All these troubles began when the British came and said that we want to build the Jewish national home for the Jews. This is how it started. Now, what is said is that they are repeating what is being done to them in Germany, okay. in Europe. Now, people may ask, what, what, what is the root of all this? Why, 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 is people, uh, why do people have trouble accepting it? Because they say that, you know, this is a national state for the Jews. They have the right to exist. Mm. They are a human being. They are a bunch of people, same nationality, other hak untuk wujud bersama. But people have to ask, is there any philosophical or religious background behind it? They claim to be the Jews, chosen people of God, and God gave them that land. Now, this is at the very core of the issue. Tuhan memberikan mereka hak, Tuhan menaikkan darjat mereka kepada tahap yang paling tinggi sekali, yang paling mulia, dan Tuhan memberikan mereka land. But they forgot to mention the conditions. Mm -hmm. If they were to mention this condition, then the troubles tak akan berlaku. The conditions has been broken, and they have to acknowledge it. The condition is that they have to worship God, they have to respect human life, they have to do good to their neighbours, they have to respect their parents, but they have disrespected all of these conditions that God has placed them. Therefore, their legitimacy on that land also uh, terminated mm -hmm. by God. So, if they do not see this termination of these conditions, therefore, they wouldn't want to look at this. They say that, do we have the right? Whatever happens, happens. How many children, how many kids terbunuh, how many women terbunuh, because this is ordained by God. This is ordained by God. They claim. Okay, so this is what they're holding on to. Yes. And everything else doesn't matter. As long as they... No matter what the United Nations matter. said, you see. Exactly. You can see the how many resolutions by the United Nations. Betul. They don't care. Why? Because they say we have the, 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 the mandate from God. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, start. Okay. Now, Ustaz, coming back to the first question tadi. So, us being far away uh, in terms of physically not being present there and seeing all this happening, Ustaz, what else can we do? What is possible? I mean, uh, I believe most, uh, if not all of us here, realize that the perception is tilting towards you know, supporting the Palestinians throughout the world. Yeah. And this tilting didn't happen in a vacuum. You know? People, you know, decades ago, keep uh, educating the world. There are people, the freedom fighters, you know, yes. the scholars, mm -hmm. keeps speaking about this. Educators, even in Malaysia, like we have people who keep talking about this, even when there is no so-called conflict. Mm -hmm. There are these that apa. There are people who keep talking about it. The, the BDS movement. So my main point is this: keep educating yourself. There are one thousand plus books on this issue. Yes. Actually, thousand plus, thousand seven hundred. Some people counted. <laughs> some people counted thousand seven hundred books Banyak. on these Palestinian-Israeli issues. Okay. How many books have we read? You know, if we really want to understand this. I recently watched uh, Ben Shapiro's uh, uh, so-called debate in, in Oxford mm -hmm. University. But sadly, when we, when we see uh, some of the pro-Palestinian representatives mm -hmm. coming without being prepared. Mm -hmm. So when Ben Shapiro asked them a couple of questions with regards to dates and some details, they can't answer the question. That means you have to come prepared. You have, you have to come into this kind of discussion prepared. Yeah. If not, you're just fighting for something based on uh, prejudice and bias and just because you are Muslim so you defend the Palestinians. We do not want that. We want to be just to everyone as best as we can. Right. I think that comes to the, to, the, to the question. I wanted to ask this question later, Ustaz, tapi since you, you, know, you mentioned about being just, um, also obviously um, a lot to do with the justice, kan, Ustaz? Yeah. A lot of people right now are talking about boycotting, um, especially yeah. global chains that yeah. contribute towards the Israeli cause, Ustaz. Maybe some wisdom from you, Ustaz, for people that are very mindful about this, wanting to also boycott, tapi maybe still on the fence, unsure. I somewhat see a kind of witch hunt going on. Mm. Anyone who, you know, uh, shows some uh, sympathy mm. towards Israel, or even visited Israel, mm -hmm. throws kind of boycott. You know, recently the case of Grab, mm -hmm. you know, just because the wife, you know, posted that they visited Israel and they were happy there. So people say, let's boycott Grab. Yeah. No, we have to be fair-minded here, brothers and sisters, yeah. and especially uh, our, our community. Mm -hmm. When we boycott something, yeah. who do we want to hurt? 
the person that is doing it? If the party that is being hurt the most, mm -hmm. our own people, mm -hmm. are the victims themselves, yeah. is that is that uh, intelligent enough? The mature kita tidak. No. Kalau boycotting yang kita buat, if the boycott that we do hurts our people more than we hurt them, Betul. is that just? We have to ada check and balance, ada timbal balas dekat sini. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are a few companies who actually declared their total support for Israel. These are the companies that we have to target our boycott. For example, Cat, Caterpillar, mm. Puma, mm -hmm. HP. Mm -hmm. These are some of the companies who declared clearly. So target on the clear ones. Mm -hmm. Don't target on, oh, I'm, I think so because I heard someone said this, because I received a forwarded message saying that boycott these companies. Mm -hmm. Who checked these lists? Mm -hmm. That is my question. We do not want to combat injustice with injustice. Betul. Who checked this list? That is my main question. What are the references? Mm -hmm. Do we have experts behind this list? Who say yeah, I yes, I have made uh, you know uh, investigation, mm -hmm. and I have uh, the capability to do that, and I have reached the conclusion that yes, these are companies who supported Israel, whether they declare it or not. Mm -hmm. Unless and until we have such credible bodies to do that, we have to be very mindful and very careful and target the clear ones only. Mm. Only target the clear ones. I see. Okay. Yeah, like Ustaz, about, you know, there because a lot of it are global chains, can Ustaz. When we talk about global chains, obviously they have presence in Malaysia as an example. Yes. And then we want to try and uh, paralyze the global chain so people boycott the ones that are present here. I Target think. the big ones, okay. the clear ones. Mm -hmm. The other companies will take uh, a poor lesson from it. Mm, okay. The other companies will take lesson from it. Okay. So maybe if not, they just have hazard. Oh, I don't boycott this. I don't boycott. I don't like this company. Let's Hello. let's boycott this. Mm -hmm. It's it's. Uh, that's that's why we lose. Yeah. Plus point there uh, as well is then people start focusing on local brands and local products, which we want people to be you know supportive of local products as well. Then sebenarnya. Okay, Ustaz, Now moving on. Now, what would you say is the worst impact of this genocide, Ustaz, towards the Palestinians for the Muslims and the world as a whole? Uh, what are we? I mean, at? to me, it's spiritual first spiritual. and foremost. It exposes our hypocrisy as mm -hmm. a, as a, as an ummah, especially the Muslim leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, it exposes our alwahan. Remember what the Prophet yes. said mm -hmm. that you will be many in mm -hmm. Akhirul Zaman, but you will be like foams after mm -hmm. flood. Mm -hmm. This this crisis exposes that as clear as possible, and this is time for us to do muhasabah. We have to go back to that fear of death and loving of the dunya. Cinta kepada dunia takut kepada mati. That's our main problem. We have to all acknowledge this. Our problem is not economics. Our problem is not political. But our problem is actually al -wahan. We forget. We forgot God, and God caused us to forget our own selves. Nasullah fa ansahum and fusahum. This is the point. And then the biggest impact to the world is that it exposes the hypocrisy of the Western ideals, yeah. the Western values of human rights. Of freedom of religion, or anti-racism, or whatever. Betul. You know, we we know today that the blood of the Jew is you know more uh, valuable than the blood of a Palestinian. Yes. You know, whatever ideals that they call for in the United Nations, it's 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 just uh, it's just empty empty talk, empty words. The ideals of the French Revolution, semuanya kita kata uh, kemunafikan saja. Mm -hmm. So this conflict exposes that, and we are in a very very sad state. But at the same time, I understand, and we can also observe. The positive uh, 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 tilting towards uh, supporting the truth and supporting the Palestinians are growing in number. Mm -hmm. uh, and why growing now? Because of social media. Because people before this maybe uh, only uh, locked by certain uh, media companies, sahaja. Okay. You know, but now we have uh, social media. Everyone can post their news. Everyone can post whatever they they observe and whatever they experience firsthand. And therefore, we see the change of perception. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And also, can I stress one of the hikmahs um, that we see via what is currently happening is the one we see the unwavering um, orang kata faith that the Palestinians have. Um, macam Ustaz kata tadi alwahan, diorang memang absolutely tak dia, um, diorang tak takut pun <laughs> kepada mati, diorang memang jihad berterusan sampai hari ini seventy five years of it. Um, and what we see, can Ustaz, one of the hikmahs is people are now. The non-Muslims are opening up the Quran 
the non-Muslims are so amazed uh, by the faith of the Palestinians being in such a situation, can Ustas, tapi with that unwavering faith towards God, and now they're seeking um, or the knowledge, opening up the Quran, and many of, of them have reverted it to Islam. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And this is what we see. So, banyak, there's a yeah. lot being viral now, um, especially on social media, and this is what we see. Um, Alhamdulillah, and I remember um, during September 11th when it happened, I was in the US. Um, and biasalah, masa tu, people didn't really know much about Islam. And yeah. that opened, can open our eyes, opened up a lot of people's mind about Islam. And that was how Islam uh, became, orang kata, more well-known, well-read, well-seeked um, in, in this world. And I still remember during the time, uh, kita kena kecam banyak lah ustaz masa tu. Yes. Uh, especially me being a Muslim. And you know, I remember just going down at the coffee shop, dekat my office building. And you know, some of the guys that I you know always met in the mornings, can hi, hello. And suddenly, uh, Anita, what's going to happen next? Uh, people are going to start bombing the schools. Uh, they're going to start, mm, you know, mm, doing mm, all these things. Mm, Tapi mm. ini yang kita tak nampak ustaz. Bila benda yeah. ni berlaku, what is what what is currently happening? That this is exactly it. If we know what's going, uh, what's going on now, mm. you may be able to bear it better mm. that time, right? Yes, betul. Because maybe waktu tu kita tak foresee the future. Betul. Right? We didn't we didn't expect that the same thing will happen. Yes now in, in our age Betul. and uh, I, I would also want to mm. add on that uh, yeah, the root of this issue is religious we cannot deny this yes, right and this is what also gives the Palestinians such conviction yakin because trust me everything that is going on now we know it mm -hmm. and we can actually predict what's going to happen what's going to happen because it is revealed by God it is uh, told by us by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu mm -hmm. alayhi that's where you find the conviction of the Palestinians that's the secret if you want to know Okay, so that's now a little bit about uh, what we're looking at right now. Uh, there is a study done. This is actually out uh, from Gaza, mm -hmm. the Gaza Community Mental Health Center. So they're looking at the most prevalent types of trauma exposure for children. And this is done for ages 8 to 19 years old. We're looking at PTSD. Currently, 54% suffer from severe PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, 33.5%, moderate. PTSD and 11% from mild or doubtful levels of PTSD with girls um, that are more vulnerable. And this is from 95% witnessing funerals, 83% witnessing shooting, 67% seeing injured or dead people, and 62% from family being injured or killed. So these are the numbers that we're looking at. And it's also interesting because I remember uh, from Maristan that came out uh, some of the data saying uh, we can't even call this PTSD, but it's at the post. It Allah. is continuous, continuous. trauma, mm, Ustaz, mm, sehingga hari mm, ini. Mm. And if we look at these numbers, can Ustaz PTSD, this is also in line um, during the Iraq War, juga, um, 2003 2011. Juga, we're looking at about the same. So people within war zones, but of course, this is continuous trauma. Iraqi War, Iraq War, if we remember, the habis, there was an end to it. Um, tapi this one with continuous trauma, we are still. Uh, counting the numbers la, as we speak. Now, Ustaz, now that we're looking at this, we also want to shift that conversation to mental health because a lot of people don't realize that now we're, you know, every morning, me, myself, you know, I'm scrolling, I'm looking at these videos, yeah, yeah. and it is affecting us. It's taking a toll, Ustaz. And um, a lot of people don't realize that it also takes a toll on your own mental health, even though you're not present there. So maybe some advice, can Ustaz, to people that are currently scrolling, you know, people are feeling, you know, I need to do more, I need to be. I need to know what's happening. That maybe just to balance that out as well as this. So maybe what can people yeah. um, do lesser of and more of? You see, the positive impact of these videos is that it shakes us uh, up core. from our slumber. Betul. You see, even though these are just videos on our phones, mm -hmm. you know, we may feel disconnected from it, but it is it is a real video, it and is. some of it, uh, you know. Just one, two hours from the incident, Betul. right? So, uh, after we watched this video, sometimes we felt such negative emotions. Mm -hmm. But these negative emotions are needed for us to, you know, have some spiritual awakening. Sure. I, 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 I focus, uh, I want to focus much on that. Yes, you may feel down, you may feel sad, but what will heal you and what will actually raise you up after that, after this negative feeling is togetherness. Don't just, you know, be in your own room watching all these videos and not doing anything about it. Yep. That's very toxic. Hmm. Instead, 
when you've watched these videos, you are impacted negatively by it, it is time for you to stand up, for you to reach out to other people, to come into communities, people, you know, going to protest ke, apa ke, just to know that your 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 experience is shared by others and it is actually very data. It's very important. Yep. Yeah. That means you're not alone in this. Yep. Uh, the worst is when you feel that like you're alone and you are just, you know, in front of these gory pictures and you do not know what to do about it. That's the worst uh, feeling that we can feel. We want to feel empowered, not uh, disempowered. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So togetherness, it's open thing. And, and do things together after that. Uh, Jangan tengok tapi tak buat apa-apa. Itu boleh jadi bukan sekat berbahaya for our mental health but it's a sin. It's a sin to watch all these videos and anything. you know that you have to do something and you don't do anything about it. Yeah. I think um, if we look at what's currently happening, a lot of people have been donating, a lot of people have been sharing despite um, a lot of barriers within social media tapi we see people have not stopped sharing all the information as much as possible ensuring that people get current information current news people have been donating uh, this is one of the things that was that's about Malaysians I have to say bila bab donating ni ustaz subhanallah we are just so generous mashallah alhamdulillah very, thank you very much everyone and, yeah, so, I, and I also believe that we are also more than that okay. just the time belum sampai saja so continue to donate guys, um, spread awareness, continue spreading and sharing on social media uh, as much as possible, join whatever rallies, convoys pun banyak sekarang ni uh, and also banyak um, sidang-sidang ilmiah juga yang sedang berlaku yes. across the nation um, so do join that, you know, every small effort counts and it matters uh, and they they do listen, they are listening to us right now we've gotten, Malaysia uh, specifically We've gotten a lot of messages, feedbacks from yeah. the Arab world specifically, Ustaz. You know, um, very happy with our uh, unwavering support as well. Alhamdulillah. Now, Ustaz, maybe a little bit more, Ustaz. Uh, in terms of, mungkin, ada specific doas, Ustaz, mungkin, yang boleh diamalkan oleh um, orang-orang kita untuk membantu. Ada specific doa ataupun kita boleh just any kind of doa, Ustaz. Of course, boleh. Tapi mungkin adalah yang more specific. Ustaz. See, when uh, when musibah uh, befalls us, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded us to say Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilaihi Rajiun. Mm -hmm. And when we read Surah Al-Baqarah, there's this verse: "Wala nabluan nakum bi shayim al khawfi wal jo." That we will certainly test you with fear, with hunger, with loss of life, loss of fruits of your actions. This will surely happen. Yep. And then Allah says, after that, those who are patient say inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun that we come from Allah and we will return to Allah now that may be a very short statement yeah. but look at how powerful it is we come from God we will come back from God that means everything that we are going through and the Palestinians are going through now is from God and how do we handle this will determine where we will return yeah. whether we will be will be getting the pleasure of God or we'll get in the wrath of God. These are all tests from God. These are incidences, you know, phenomena, scenarios that is happening in human society. It's just nakum al khawfi. It comes back to that verse. So which side are we on? Are we in the side of God? Are we in the side of the perpetrators? Are we in the side of the defenseless? So this is something that we have to decide for ourselves. All right, so if you guys have any questions, please drop it in the comment section. I think there's a question. Um, Aisha, can you come? Yes. Faith can be sent and has been sent. How can we help from a far away seem like a trauma on the people who are just like to the comments? Which one is this? So, but yes, definitely. Can we've, the donations kita dah bagi, aids pun dah sampai, alhamdulillah. Um, but with the children, Ustaz, currently, a lot of them have lost their parents, as an example. Maybe they're alone right now. Maybe they've lost their siblings. Maybe one parent. Oh, much money kita nak bantu sebenarnya daripada jauh. Yesterday, actually, um, I got a message from one of my friends um, out of Raza um, asking if um, there are countries that can provide um, psychiatrists, psychologists, counselors that can speak Arab. So that's one of the things because they want to do sessions online. So that's one of the ways that we can help. So if you are fluent in Arabic, this is your chance. Yes. Um, you don't really, you don't even have to be a counsellor, you know, just a volunteer that can provide emotional support, that have empathy and compassion. You may reach out as well to them because this is what they need at this current moment. Um, obviously, can we start, they're overstretched. They need yes. more people to be able to help out. As we speak, more people are being killed, obviously. So 
more people need to be there to provide the help. But other than that, kind of says, how do we help um, the children? Kalau kita tengok pun dekat Malaysia ni pun we have about um, 4,000 eh, Palestinians um, at this current moment not being able to go to school and um, all these different challenges with the refugees, etc. Um, so maybe it's just at this point. I don't know. I'll be. I may be naive politically, but let them go to school. <laughs> Allow them to go to school. Mm-hmm. Allow the children of the refugees to go to school. Mm-hmm. Right? If not, uh, the other negative uh, social uh, social repercussions will, will arise. We know that. And we are speaking about helping the children there. What about the Palestinian children here in Malaysia who in li- who are, who are in limbo, isn't it? Yeah. So a simple call maybe for the Malaysian government, let them, let them go to school. All right, thank you very much for the question. Um, is there another question? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, people are not able, however, some can be more positive at the time, but what do we do or how do we educate those who are against the ceasefire in the amount of violence that tries to end violence? Again, again, the, the last how, part, how do we? How do we educate those who are against the ceasefire? Oh, okay. How do we educate those that are against the ceasefire because of the lack of knowledge or understanding? Says, how do we educate them? Because we see that um, there are people that are not for the ceasefire. Um, no, we have to. We have to continuously pressure our governments and the governments around the world mm-hmm. that <laughs> the state of Israel is the problem. But as individuals, I put Ustaz, I think the question is. As individuals, we have mm-hmm. to collate our strength. Mm-hmm. To send this pressure to the to the government, mm-hmm. to the government around the world, to the United Nations, because people seems to accept this gangster. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing. The I existence think, of this gangster. I think the question what what this person is implying is they don't believe that it's um it's wrong. But meaning they don't want the ceasefire okay. because they believe Hamas is a terrorist. Now, if they do not believe mm-hmm. that they are, the only way is dialogue. Dialogue. Dialogue and debate. Betul. We we don't have that. Much in, mm. in Malaysia also. Yes, betul. Dia ada ceramah banyak, tapi dialog dengan debat tak ada. Betul. And are we willing to listen to refutations? Yes. You know, the the Jewish, uh, the the Israelis may have their own point of view. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean we agree with them, but we need to hear their so-called argumentations mm-hmm. because their arguments are being spread in CNN, BBC, you know, the Economist. Okay. So we need to have a counter argument for that. Mm-hmm. And therefore, for me, the best is to increase dialog, mm-hmm. to increase open dialogues in our national TV. Right? Kenapa kita hanya ada debat pasal ekonomi tapi tak ada debat pasal Israel pasal isu. Hmm. Call the other party to represent uh, the Israeli narrative mm-hmm. and call our representative to rebut. Mm-hmm. I think that because the change of opinion comes from the change of knowledge. Right? And knowledge must be changed by the change of uh, facts. Okay, that's actually a brilliant idea because I've been watching the news outside tapi betul juga dekat Malaysia tak ada. We were not having that that it's, it's like one. No, no question no, about no it. No question about it. Betul, betul. It's just one sided line in that sense. We're not hearing from the other side as well and then making an informed decision ataupun informed um, whatever it might be. We, we also point. want to be mm. just to the Israelis. Mm-hmm. Kita berdosa kita. Mm-hmm. Kalau kita cakap sokong Palestin, buta-buta. Mm-hmm. We will be questioned by Allah in Akhara. Mm-hmm. That means if the truth is with the Israelis, mm-hmm. it's wajib for us to support the Israelis. Mm-hmm. But if the truth is with the Palestinians, we have to be with the Palestinians. Mm-hmm. But we need to understand the, the both of the narratives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although, of course, mm-hmm. obviously, what we're seeing right now is the genocide happening. Yes, of course. Okay. That's a fact. Yeah. Right. Okay, Aisha, there was one more question. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay. First, we have to verify the, the the news, the claims that Hamas, you know, killed civilians. Hamas. Uh, it's a terrorist group. We have to question all this narrative together. Check balik. Reconsider. Mm-hmm. Who said this? If this comes from Israel, if this comes from America, are they trusted in the first place? Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. so I to me, I personally I trust Hamas. Mm-hmm. Whatever atrocities and they want to do on the Hamas too, mm-hmm. maybe other satu dua yang benar sebab kesilapan sebahagian orang. Mm-hmm. But to say that Hamas is a terrorist group, that is verbal terrorism. That statement itself is verbal terrorism. To say Hamas is a terrorist group is verbal terrorism. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Ustaz. Yes, go ahead. I think we've got, yeah. Maybe Ustaz, boleh? Boleh, boleh. One, boleh, one boleh. more? Inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Silakan. Uh, this question is for Farida. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Mr. Hazard, when someone is passionate in mental health, what meaning is given to a phrase that tends to contribute to people in their health and in the past life as well? 
on mental health. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Now, now that we've seen, and this is not the first wall, guys. There's been many, and I think what is really important right now is once the borders are open, once we are able to go to Palestine, those of you that are ready, we need your help, obviously. And this is one of our dreams being Nyasa is to be able to go to Palestine and provide emotional help. Now when that's when this happens and once this becomes a reality, please do join us because we need as many people as possible and of course funding juga. Yeah. So those of you that can provide funding or we can fundraise, can provide donations, we would love to bring our team there then that way we can provide emotional help directly to the Palestinian people. But again, we need Arab speaking people as well. So those of you that are, you know, proficient in the language, please do help out. We would need translators, yeah, yeah. Um, so not just particularly um, psychiatrists, psychologists, counselors, but really just anyone that have a little bit of time that is passionate about it, try to learn a little bit more about mental health. Um, and, you know, together, this is what we can do collectively, uh, inshallah. So this is, you know, one of our dreams is that inshallah, I mean, I mean, I mean. Is there any more? Um, one more? Okay, one more, guys. 6.40 already. Okay, go ahead. So, macam mana saya untuk ikut sistem yang telah saya tersebut yang berkaitan sebab bila benda begini happen to happen yeah. and before our eyes that kita tak boleh nak buat apa-apa dengan sistem yang boleh membuat kita. Walaupun kita semua tahu kalau apa dalam Allah sesat. Tapi sebelum itu tak dapat kita tahu. I don't see uh, much problem with sadness. Yeah, me too. Tak apa. Sekarang ni, we are in a grieving period. Yes. We have to grieve for our brothers and sisters. Kita kena meratap. Apa apa dia panggil? Grieving? Betul. Meratap lah kan? Hmm, betul. Ni adalah period ratapan. Ni adalah waktu ratapan. Kita sepatutnya mempersoalkan diri kita kalau this kita is the time nangis. where we go for holidays, <laughs> we enjoy betul. ourselves. Betul. Like, macam kalau keluarga kita sendiri kena, takkanlah kita, uh, kenapa saya bersedih lama eh? It's normal. It's okay. That means there's sincere love in you. The questioner, awak ada kasih sayang yang jujur. Awak ada simpati dan empathy yang jujur. So tak apa. Selagi krisis ni tidak berhenti, tak apalah kita bersedih. Tapi pastikan kita tetap boleh melakukan fungsi kehidupan kita. Kan? Uh, dan buat apa yang sepatutnya kita buat. Kebersamaan untuk naikkan kembali semangat saya dah sebut tadi. Bila kita seorang-seorang ni, kita tak tahu nak buat apa. Kita rasa gloom and doom. Itu yang kita tak nak. Rasa sedih okey, tapi jangan rasa helpless. Uh, jangan rasa helpless, jangan rasa putus asa. Itu dihalang dalam agama kita. Okay, in the end of the day, we know that everything is under the control of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He knows what is happening. He said that in the Quran, Allah kata, semua berlaku di bawah pengetahuan dia. Tidak ada yang terlepas. Perbuatan orang-orang yang zalim ini tidak terlepas daripada pengetahuan Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Tapi Allah biarkan ada hikmah di sebaliknya, ada sebab yang besar di sebaliknya. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Um, if I can add. Now, being a person myself um, with a mental health condition, um, every single day scrolling, watching. I don't. I don't watch. Um, I don't spend too much time right now watching it because every time when I watch a video, memang I'll cry. Um, it's very difficult for me because when I see, especially when I see the children. Yes. Um, you yes. know, being a parent. Um, so I have to say <laughs> that I cry every day. Um, I think today was very difficult for me because um, I had a big program today and I came out with watching a couple of videos and then having to go on stage speaking. Mm. Um, so that was very difficult. Tetapi, alhamdulillah, I think macam Ustaz kata, the camaraderie, you know, don't be alone, be with people, being able to just talk about it openly, you know, having discussions, thinking about what else can we do moving forward. Macam tadi, the question of after this, what can we do? Collectively, I think this is a very important question, guys. So really structuring, you know, um, organizing ourselves um, because all this can only work if we do it together. Ini uh, penting. And you know, Ustaz Zaki always say, we all know this. Victory is very near. Um, so I think ini adalah uh, kekuatan kita ataupun kekuatan semangat um, kita sekarang ni adalah kita tahu the help of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is very near. And the victory of the Palestinian people are very near, sebenarnya. So just um, hold on, you know, do your best, do whatever we can in our own capacity and collectively as societies, communities, nations, yeah. um, you know, to help um, as much as we can. And of course, our strongest weapon being Muslims, kita punya doa, continuously, continue making that doa. 
not only for the Palestinians, but you know, really everyone that is going through difficulties, challenges, adver adversities, you know, in life. Because obviously, this is constant, even as long as we're in this dunya. Um, so that's just a little bit from me. Now, um, is there are there any more questions, Aisha? That did I? Okay, uh, Ustaz, any last words from you before we end? Um, and thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. We will continue having this uh, discussion as long as the ceasefire um, doesn't happen so that we can support you in having these conversations and maybe support you as well, you know, emotionally, psychologically, so that we can all, you know, at least have a place can Ustaz, yes. to talk about this, inshallah. Mm -hmm. So um, we spoke about uh, Islam a lot, right? Particularly because... Uh, we are, uh, most of us here are Malaysians, right? Who are in Malaysia. But it doesn't mean uh, uh, we do not call upon the support of our uh, non-Muslim friends, yeah? friends Which in humanity. Which are many, right? That we can work hand in hand with you continuously until this injustice stops. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. Inshallah. Ameen. So thank you very much, everyone. Please keep, keep the du'as going, the donations, whatever you can. Please keep sharing, spreading the awareness, seeking knowledge, understanding, and providing empathy and compassion, not only to our Palestinian brothers and sisters, for all, uh, everyone around the world that are currently facing any kind of injustices and that are currently struggling, inshallah. So thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Uh, I end this with wabilahi tawfiq wa hidayah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much.